Pitcher in the Knicks for the sure, most part. Sure, sure. Um, and he played Mono Black Aggro there, and he's playing it here this weekend. Um, this is a deck that was popular in the Block and Trusted Pro Tour and Pro Tour Journey into Knicks. People have tried it in Standard, but to very little success, honestly. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of hype uh, basically around the, the third one drop, uh, but really you need more than just a giant pile of one drops that attack for two to actually be a deck. Yeah, that's, that, that's been kind of the problem, I think. Mm -hmm. We see a thought sees here from Ellis. He's going to cast, excuse me, he's going to look at a Jace, an Aetherling, a Supreme Verdict Intention Sphere, another Jace, and a thought sees. Don't mm -hmm. have a good look at Jason's hand. It seems like he's probably going to decide between the Verdict or the D Sphere here. Yeah, I would think so. There's that one land hanging out there at the bottom, that one watery grave. Uh, this is a, not a land heavy hand for Tony. Uh, he's going to need some help in order to actually cast any of his spells. Uh, that Aetherling, basically a dead card. Yeah. Um, it, in theory, will matter if the game goes long enough, but really not a card you want in your opening hand in this matchup. We're going to go with the D-Sphere. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Tormented Arrow is going to come in for two. Frontier Arrow is going to go down to 18. And you see there's a follow-up play here. It's a pretty good one in Arachnos Cackler. Just, that's what this deck is actually all about. And we've seen in formats past where having the deck that has the one mana, two power creatures, mm -hmm. it can be too fast for some decks to handle. But oddly sure. enough, that's just really not the case in this standard format. No. Uh, the, big, the big problem for these style decks is really Courser of Crufix and uh, Sylvan Carriage. Probably more so than Courser, actually. Yeah. But, but that package, you don't really see one without the other. Yep. Uh, but those, those two cards in particular are very effective at stopping power, uh, two powered creatures from attacking. Herald Torment going to come into play here. Notice the Mutavault that Ellis played as well. So he's being very aggressive. That's what this deck is able to do. You know, if a deck kind of fumbles and stumbles like Frontier is doing right mm. now, uh, it doesn't give you any breathing room to actually catch back up. He's Ellis is going to take one from the trigger for the Herald. He also has a copy of Bogus and Marauder in his hand, which, while the Intimidate effect is not important in this matchup, the fact that it just has haste is. Yeah, well, the fact that it's just a body that can attack and block. Even if it didn't have haste, it would be very good here. Uh, Tony, we, we know, is at least two draw steps away from actually doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Tony, of course, has, he's, he has a last breath that he has drawn in the meantime. So he's going to get to interact in, in some minor way. Uh, but really, Jason, I don't think, cares about anything Tony does unless it's land, land, supreme verdict at this stage. Yeah. Here come your attackers. It's going to be an attack for nine. As you mentioned, the last breath is going to allow Frontier to interact with Ellis. He will take care of the tormented hero. Ellis will get a little bit of life, which really doesn't matter very much. What's important here is Frontier is going down from 14 to seven. So it looks like, it looks like he's facing lethal on the very next turn. Yeah, that last breath doesn't even actually change the clock. Nope. Was it, was it was a two-turn clock, removed the creature, still a two-turn clock. No third land and not much more of that game to be played. Jason Ellis is going to win game number one here over Tony Frontier. Pretty easily with Mono Black, all things considered. Yeah, uh, when, when Mono Black aggro looks good, it looks really good. This it, is true. It does, it does make Magic look very easy when it's winning. The thing that I find really interesting about Mono Black is just there's a lot of different cards that you can play. Mm -hmm. um, the two-drop spot has been a topic of discussion for some time. You know, you look at Thrill Kill Assassin, gets by Sylvan Carriots, it gets mm -hmm. by Corsair of Crufix, those mm -hmm. cards that you did mention. One, two copies of that here in Ellis's deck. You've got Spiteful Returned. It's just a 1-1, one, one, but in theory, it's a 3-1. Sure. You like to think. Pain Seer, it's a, it's a new Dark Confidant. Not really. Eh, yeah, kind of. Not yeah. even close, really. Yeah. It's kind of sad, actually, how bad that card is. And then you got the, you know, I didn't even mention Pack Rat. I actually kind of forgot about Pack right. Rat, because that's a kind of the, you know, the the go the, the standard that people go for with Mono Black Devotion, not playing any of that card either. Then you got your threes, obviously, you have um, Master of the Feast, and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the slots, as far as the deck go, there's a ton of them to be played. There really are. But this is kind of the, you know, the, the version that Ellis is playing is pretty stock. Uh, honestly, and you take a look at his sideboard, he's got two Deathrite Shamans, four Duress, a Zathra Necromancer, a couple copies of Lifebane Zombie. That's another three you could play in the main deck, given how much Jun Monsters there has been. Mm -hmm. uh, three Doom Blades and then three Dark Betrayals. In this particular matchup, I expect to see Duress come in. I can see the Zathra Necromancer come in. Outside of that, I don't really think he needs much more help. No, probably not. Uh, Just kind of get these removal spells out of here. Yeah, I mean, he wants to keep probably the Hero's Downfalls uh, for, for Jace's and just for stray Muta Vaults and things like that. But uh, has more removal than he needs in this matchup. So, yeah, I think you're right. Just exchanges some removal for some, some more action there. Uh, outside of drawing lands for Tony, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I would recommend getting those Doom Blades out of his deck. He's got a couple of those. Yeah, well, it is one. He has, okay. has one main deck Doom Blade. Those can't kill anything other than Mutavolt. So, yes, I think he will want to get rid of that. Uh, Tony actually has a pretty impressive package of his own out of the sideboard. Uh, gains access to two Nyx Fleece Ram, two Fiend Slayer Paladin, two Archangel of Thune and two Blood Baron of Viscopa. So 
basically after board, he has just the one Aetherling in his main deck. Uh, but after board, he actually brings in a package of creatures. Uh, some of them are just blockers. Some of them can be aggressive in their own right. They all gain life. That's mm -hmm. huge. Um, I don't think he brings anything else. He has access other than those creatures. He has two Dispel, two Thoughtseize, one Blind Obedience. Maybe he wants that. He actually probably does. Uh, and one Negate and one Faded Retribution. So uh, a package of life gain, nine cards in total. Um, the question is really, can he make room for all of that? And I would assume that that would not be a problem. Um, likely cuts the Aetherling if he's bringing in so many other threats. Of course, gets the Doomblade out of there. Uh, I don't think he wants Thoughtseize in this matchup. The counter magic is not good. Uh, really, you don't. You want to be able to deal with things that are on the board. Yeah. Uh, you can't afford to sit with uh, with reactive spells in hand in this matchup. So that's four dissolve, one syncopate. Um, so that's five slots. Doomblade is six. Thoughtseize is seven, eight, and Aetherling is nine. So uh, a pretty clean transition, I think. Uh, that's how I would board. Just basically bringing in a bunch of uh, five drop whammies that gain life. Nyx Fleece Rams and Fiend Slayer Paladins to kind of bridge the gap there. Where I imagine Ellis has got a lot of his edge over the course of the tournament is that people just aren't ready for this style of deck. This is something that when Journey Nyx came in, everyone's like, ah, you know, this is pretty easy to build and straightforward and put together. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to make sure that I'm able to beat decks that are pretty low to the ground and pretty quick. Sure. Um, as the weeks have gone by and we've, you know, kind of transitioned to the open series, these kind of decks have just not really had a lot of success. Be it red, uh, be it this color, model black, just no low to the ground hyper aggressive aggro deck has really had success. Right. I, I think the best we could say, and it doesn't really even fit in that camp, is burn. Sure. You know, I think that's the closest we've gotten. So oh, yeah, yeah, burn is definitely its own thing. Yeah, yeah. Think, yeah. So now you've got Ellis kind of playing this strategy where it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, Frontiero was just like, well, I didn't even uh, prepare for this because I expected a lot of mid-range decks, sure. high a big range one last weekend, stuff like that. We haven't seen anything that was just, I'll play another yeah, one drop. Th this is actually a, a fantastic uh, weekend for Jackal Pup, I think. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually saw Mono Red Aggro uh, lock up a top eight spot last round. Jeez, okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, Fire Drinker Seder and all of his friends. <laughs> uh, won a match in about six minutes, I felt, I felt like. So. And it's kind of funny because those decks are really easy to beat, Model Red or this one, for example, sure. if you want to beat them. Yeah, it's not hard at all. But if people are kind of ignoring them, which kind of makes sense given what's happened over the past couple of weeks, mm -hmm. it's kind of a good spot to do this sort of thing in. Yeah, um, a deck like Jun, Jun Monsters, which we, we were talking about, is, is probably the deck to beat right now. Yep. Uh, th that deck doesn't care about a bunch of spot removal, yep. particularly cheap kind of uh, subjective spot removal. So people trim those cards and then these style decks show up to take advantage. Here's a thought. So he's going to take a look at a Dia side. You've got a Sphinx's Revelation, two Heroes Downfall, a Temple of Silence, and a Godless Shrine. And while Heroes Downfall is fine in this situation, when you're paying three mana to take care of a one mana spell, you can't be happy with that exchange. That's true. Um, in this particular case, he has lands, so that's, a, that's an improvement over last that's game. start. Uh, but he, he's going to get to interact at every stage of the game. Yeah. Uh, the thought is going to clear out that Dia side, which could get rid of a creature. Um, but he, he's going to be able to actually cast a removal spell into a removal spell, and if he finds a land, he's going to be able to cast that Blood Baron of his Copa. Mm -hmm. uh, can Jason do anything about a Blood Baron? We're drawing dead. He can Lifebane Zombie. Yeah, I guess that's, the, that's yeah. the best we can do, and that, that assumes that Lifebane Zombie's in his deck after sideboard, True. and the timing lines up, of course. Yeah. Uh, but once Blood Baron gets into play, it's not so good. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, again, we mentioned how it can be very easy to beat these kind of decks if you want to. A card for that you know, really shows that is Nyx Fleece Ram, yep. which Tony just drew last turn. Mm -hmm. that, that card is very difficult to beat. Yeah, uh, Nyx Fleece Ram is kind of an, un an unsung uh, journey into Nyx All-Star. Um, it's, of course, not a main deck card, so it, it doesn't get a lot of props, really, but uh, this card has been showing up in a ton of sideboards. Uh, I, you, you see it left and right. It's in every Sphinx's Revelation deck. It's in a lot of the mid-range decks at this point. Uh, honestly, Nick's Fleece Ram might quietly be the real reason why these decks have kind of fallen by the wayside. Yeah. It's funny, too, because next week's Ram is in this card where you play it, and you're like, oh, man, that card's so good, like Obes there or something. Right, it's right. just like, that's eh, really annoying, and I really can't do anything about it, and mm -hmm. I think I lost to that, maybe? Yeah. But that card is, I mean, that's <laughs> the aggro. Yeah, you have to Hero's Downfall, that stupid yeah, thing. Like, Get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to see an attack here for, it looks like, three, which leads me to believe that Ellis has a follow-up play. Mm -hmm. If he's not leaving Death Right back, I am so surprised though to see Jason actually bring in Death Right Shaman because he doesn't have green mana. Not that he would really want it. Yeah, gain life, gaining life is not the issue here. Um, likely, this is kind of a way to range. Uh, you have to assume that your initial assault is going to drop Tony down to like eight at the highest, mm -hmm. eight six four down somewhere around there. Uh, once he's there, 
he, you could see him stabilizing behind uh, Jace Architect of Thought, behind, sure. uh, well, Nick's Fleece Ram, actually. Sure. Uh, but in the main deck, you have to worry about Elspeth, for example, making tokens that will kind of gum up the works. Yeah. Uh, being able to ignore that is pretty valuable. Ellis right now has a copy of Spiteful Return in his hand. He also has a land. So right now what Jason's deciding is where do I want to put this Spiteful Return? What's the best creature? And you know, the obvious one, I think, is the Tormented Hero. It doesn't mean yeah. that it's correct, but it's the obvious one because you get to trigger the heroic. Yeah, just getting that extra trigger is pretty valuable. Um, he, of course, he knows about Hero's Downfall, too. So um, that's that's the real question there is, like, do I want to put this? Well, whatever I put this on is going to die. Yep. So... Do I, do I want to get the heroic trigger, however minor it may be, or do I want to put it on something that is slightly worse in the abstract? So Frontier finally drew the land. The problem here, use problem kind of lightly, is that it's a hollow fountain. He's going to have to take two to cast that Blood Baron in this situation, assuming that that's what he wants to cast at this point. Mm -hmm. It seems pretty difficult to pass that up, but let's say he takes the two. Death Rite will put him down to four. Mm -hmm. Death Rite will put him down to two. And Spelt will return Trigger <laughs> will put him down to zero. Yes, yeah, so Death Rite Shaman actually uh, really pulling its weight here. And I think uh, we, we see Tony kind of uh, running that math and coming to that same conclusion. He it, does have access to, I believe, another copy of Heroes Downfall. Yeah, yep. okay. Yeah, he never cast the first one, actually. Um, so he can deal with it, um, but he's still in bad shape here. He's going to, yeah, like, he can Heroes Downfall. I think Spiteful Return is the best target. Uh, it, it basically attacks for three, whereas the others only do two. Um, can do that. Falls to six, there's end step. The uh, Scarhide drops him to four. And then he's actually right back where he started. And if the spot for return comes right off the top of the deck, he just dies right here, right? Well, sure. Yeah. And I guess, you know, you can't really play around some of these things. Yeah. And actually, no, actually, I think we're actually, he's just DOB. Yeah, because there's a mutable hiding uh, in the row. Yeah, I actually kind of missed okay. that yeah. for a moment right. there, too. Yeah, put you down to two, activate the Death Rite Shaman, put you down to a zero. He's going to show a Blood Baron, a Sphinx of Revelation, and Elspeth. <laughs> wow. All three of those cards are both very powerful and very expensive. They are. They are. And he's going to end up dying to Gnarled Scarhiden, friends. So Jason Ellis <laughs> is going to win this match two games to zero. Mono Black Aggro very quickly dispatching Esper Control. And you have to imagine that's a good matchup for Mono Black Aggro. I would think so, yeah. I mean, I think that's got to be one of the big draws to playing a deck like Mono Black Aggro at this stage. Uh, this, what this is here, this is an example, I feel, of metagaming. 